This video is brought to you by 3, bringing you 4G at no extra cost and some exclusive deals over at btech.com. Hey guys, welcome to BTech. It's Basil here with an Xperia Z2, and this video is all about launchers. Now, the Xperia Z2 ships with a pretty decent launcher itself. For example, you can have this really cool live wallpaper right there, pinch out, you can have a variable number of home screens, and there is even an easy mode, not to mention swap out themes. So that on many levels, you wouldn't really need a new launcher because you can completely change the look and feel of your phone with Sony's own custom launcher. But having said that, if you wanted to, for example, get rid of wallpaper scrolling or something small like that, you wouldn't have that kind of control over your experience. But do you know what would give you that kind of control? A third party launcher. So if we jump into the settings, jump into home, we can see we've installed five launchers and we're gonna talk you around them. We're gonna kick off with Action Launcher. You can see if we swipe in, we've got our widgets panel. Now this gives us access to whatever widgets we drag around here. We can push widgets out of the way. We can even resize widgets. It's a very, very simple organizational tool. You can see that frees up our main home screen for shortcuts. But don't let that fool you. You've also got a third applications drawer on the left. And if we go to the left of that, eight widgets drawer as well. So all in all, around four home screens, or at least looks and feels like you have four home screens. What's really great about this launch is the fact all your shortcuts work even harder than normal shortcuts. If we were to swipe down on one, for example, you can see it opens up the widget. Swipe down on Gmail, opens up the widget, and Google does exactly the same. So you don't need to have your home screens populated by widgets, you can just have these very clean icons. You can also customize things like the number of home screens that you have, wallpaper transitions, etc. Jumping into the settings now, a second launcher is Nova Launcher. If we jump through on home, then we can see Nova Launcher in action. If we pinch through, we can see a variable number of home screens again. We can add and remove. We get a different kind of control over our home screens than we do with Stock Launcher. Um, if we tap through on one of the home screens as well, we can see we've got a different transition on here. It kind of fades, pinches out. The reason for that is we can control our transition and we can control pretty much everything about this launcher. That's a real standout point of Nova Launcher. It's the most highly customizable launcher out there. We've got Nova Launcher Prime, so that's a more premium version. It's a paid version. We can literally control width margin, height margin, scroll effect, which is um, what we were controlling earlier. So if we, for example, press glass, it'll create a glass type effect. Scroll indicator, as you can see, it really is extensive. And if we go into advanced settings, we can even have our widgets overlap and crazy stuff like that. Jumping out of that, we can tap through on our applications drawer as well. We can see it's just as customizable. Jumping through on advanced again, you can have different tabs, etc. cetera. Um, you can also see dock settings, highly customizable, so you can have various dock pages um, and different dividers even for your dock. So you can see loads and loads and loads of stuff right here. What's really cool is the fact you can even have an OK Google command, despite the fact Sony's launcher doesn't have stock um, OK Google functionality, which is basically if you say OK Google from your home screen, it will launch Google now. You can override that with Nova Launcher. If we jump through to home, for example, and say OK Google, does take a while to do this. There you go. So it's recognizing what we're saying now, for example. <laughs> Dave Grohl. Anyway, so that's the crux of uh, Nova Launcher. As you can see, you've also got an applications tray that is extremely stock as well with widgets and applications with some nice color accents too. So yeah, Nova Launcher, perfect for anyone who really wants to customize their phone. The third launch we're gonna talk about is KitKat Launcher. Tapping through on that, going home, you can see it is the most stock looking launcher, especially when we've thrown our Nexus 5 wallpaper on here. If we swipe through to the left, we can also see a shortcut to Google now. Going home, we can say, okay, Google, and give it a second. We'll probably be reading what we're saying now. Yeah, exactly. So if we jump through on home, we can also control things with gestures. So swipe down, pulls down our notifications tray, swipe up, it pulls down some quick settings toggles, and if we jump through, long press our home screen, we can see we've got settings, 
widgets, applications and wallpapers that we can control. You can see it's quite sensitive. So for example, we have a few issues with long pressing and then letting go because it does just think we're gesturing. So you may want to turn off some of those gestures if you've got super sensitivity or glove mode set on your Xperia Z2. Generally speaking though, the crux of the remainder of the UI works pretty nicely, especially again, if you like that OK Google functionality, but don't want something quite as full on as Nova Launcher to get your head around. You can even control things like the lock screen as well um, and swap that out from the stock Xperia lock screen that is this. Jumping back into the settings and you can see we're going to move on to Smart Launch, but we have two Smart Launchers. We've got regular Smart Launcher and Smart Launch Pro. We really recommend you buy Smart Launch Pro if you like Smart Launcher. The reason being Smart Launcher Pro enables widget support and we like having our widgets. Why? Well, we're going to show you now. So jumping through to the home screen immediately, everything looks different. Everything looks really, really cool really shows off that gorgeous screen with that very clear and succinct iconography. If we jump through to the left of that, we can see all our applications, but these are actually categorized like so. You can customize these and we'll come onto that later. And to the right hand side of all that, you've got some widgets and we can have more widgets, but we've only really set our large RSS reader because that's the one we use mainly. Now, when you first launch Smart Launcher, it's going to prompt you to set a default camera, phone, music, internet, gallery, and messaging app. These are going to take the place of your home screen and you can add and remove applications and folders to this home screen. If we jump through to the left of that, we can do that by pressing that button or swiping through left. We can act completely, completely cat um, customize these categories, but they are defaulted with a relative accuracy to produce communication, internet, games, media, utility, and settings options. If we were to long press on one of these options, that's where you can add a category, change your icon, etc. If we were to long press on one of the applications themselves, we can either open it, edit the icon, set it as hidden, uninstall it, or we can also drag it to a different category. Jumping back home, we can see we have our widgets and we can also add a widget like so, and we can jump out of that. And we can also control a few various other things and settings such as gestures. So a swipe down will bring down our notifications bar. We haven't set it to do that yet. So what we need to do is we need to jump into the settings, preferences, and we've got gestures. So enable gestures, swipe down, and we can do show notifications panel, tap on that, jump back, jump back again, and away we go. Really, really nice and simple. Um, what's great about this is just how different it is from stock Android and easy it is to get your head around. If you set it up, you could very simply um, give this phone to someone who's maybe not as tech savvy as you, and they will be good to go if they prefer the look of this to, for example, Sony's Easy Home Launcher. Our final launcher is Go Launcher, and Go Launcher is a bit of a quirky one. You can see it looks very, very cool, and it's very gesture centric. So let's pull up, and this is kind of Samsung Galaxy S5, almost iOS-y with its flatness, really, really sweet looking. And it's got gestures as well, swipe down for your notifications tray. We can also see you've got some uh, pull up options by tapping through on that, which gives you the same long press and you can pull up the same options and pinch out and you can get an overview or go panels. What's really nice about this, if we pull in closer to frame, you can see you can actually throw on predefined screens. So for example, your favorite contact screen, your calendar screen, etc. Now, the thing we like about Go Launcher is that it is free and it looks very, very slick. What we're not so fond of is the fact it's constantly trying to sell you stuff. You can go for the pro version and that's great. What that means is you're not going to get any adverts um, throughout the user interface. What you also get, um, however, is a lot of themes that you can customize. Unfortunately though, you can actually install a theme and you can go right through to installing it on your phone thinking that it's free, press apply, and then you actually have to buy it. So all your themes are in-app purchases even if they've been installed. We'd much rather they were purchases um, that are made before you have to install them. Generally though, it is very customizable. If we jump through to the options, we can see we've got wallpaper themes, transition effects, and we can edit our home screens as well as access preferences and even see Go Launcher news. There's a real community behind Go Launcher and loads of apps in the Google Play Store that will give you um, plenty of customization over the actual launcher itself. We can upgrade to Prime and we can see exactly what Prime gives you. No ads, 
3D transitions, wallpaper filters, security lock, side dock, more gestures, and that's pretty much it. You can see how slick everything looks. It's just been updated, just given, been given a new fresh lick of paint. As far as the uh, general customizations go, you can set whether your wallpaper is scrollable, etc. So that's something you can't do with the stock Xperia experience. Um, and you can also have infinite scrolling, so it just keeps scrolling, etc. You can also swap out your backgrounds, themes, application drawer, etc. And control your ge um, gestures and transitions. As far as advanced settings, you can see that's pretty administrative, not stuff that's going to control the look and feel of your phone too much. Generally, therefore, once you clean up the stock widgets, etc., you can actually get Go Launcher to look very, very nice, very slick. Probably our favorite launcher in terms of the out-of-the-box experience, but we're not huge, huge fans of the fact that you have to buy so much stuff to get the most out of it. Hopefully, you have enjoyed this roundup of the top five launches for the Sony Xperia Z2. Now, we picked them because they really do make the most of that big, gorgeous screen, but they also support things like customizations that Sony's Xperia Home doesn't. If you do have any questions about the Xperia Z2, about any of the launches that we've tested, want us to try anything out on the Pro versions before you buy them, fire them in the comments section below. Hopefully you've enjoyed our video. If you have, make sure you click the like button. If you like our channel in general, you can click subscribe. Head over to btech.com. Over there you can find the latest in smartphones, tablets, smart gadgets, and some awesome deals as well. Thanks for watching.